My story starts with my dad uh, being an elder in a church, and we grew up in that church, and uh, then I got baptized, and just after that, my dad took my mum's life, and as you can imagine, that just burnt the bridge of faith below the waterline for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited because we've got someone really special in the studio. We've got Peter here with us. Peter, you've come on in. Thank you so much for your time this morning. It's wonderful to be here. Now, Peter, you, you, some some people who were listening a few weeks ago might have heard part of your story. And uh, you've popped in this morning to have a bit of a further story. And so as, as you're having a conversation out there, we've dragged you into the studio <laughs> here. So we're very, very thankful. Peter... In in whatever words you want to use, your your story just blew us away. How God has been using, you know, uh, you know, not just you know His Word and everything in your life, but also vision in your life. There, just give us a little bit of the background of of your story, where it all started from. My story starts with my dad uh, being an elder in a church, and we grew up in that church, and. Uh, then I got baptized, and just after that, my dad took my mum's life. And as you can imagine, that just burnt the bridge of faith below the waterline for me. Yeah. And so uh, the Lord reached out to me in his faithfulness. I walked past a church when I was 18, and he spoke to me as clearly as I'm speaking to you, and he said, I'm going to put you in this church. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then uh, 10 years went past. I was very stubborn, I guess. I was hurting a lot, and... Uh, he, walked me, he brought me back to that exact church 10 years later and said, I told you I was going to bring you here wow. to meet a dear young man that I saw the love of Christ in. And the Lord reminded me that I'd shook hands with him six years earlier and said, somehow, some way, I hope I'll get to see you again. And so uh, it was like the beginning of a, uh, of a surrender for me. And it was like, for me... Uh, the Lord was fulfilling Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion. Mm. So the Lord did that in me, and uh, since then he's just continued to show himself faithful. And uh, for me, I picked up vision through one of my brothers. He, he encouraged me to start listening to vision, and uh, I just found the program so it was so good. And I've just uh, continued to walk that walk. You, you were having a chat off microphone before. You were talking about vision being like a platform for you underneath your feet, giving you the stability to do the big things that God is asking you to do. One of those big things that I know it's really, you know, this is like mind-blowing for a lot of people, is what God did in your heart w with your relationship with your father. Yeah, well, my relationship with my dad, one day I was walking through a 10-ton crane bay, and the Lord spoke to me and said, you've got to find your dad. And I said, I found him two years ago. I don't want to see him again. And he said, no, you've got to find him again. And I found him in the hospital in the intensive heart care ward. And the Lord was gracious and got him well enough that uh, I could spend some time with him. I took him home on some weekends and I took him to church, the church that I'd been going to for about 12 years at that time. So they were my really close family mm. and um, they knew his background and were so accepting and so loving. And um, I sat him down one weekend for him to uh, tell me what he wanted for his funeral um, while he could still speak because he couldn't write anymore, and we recorded that. And then he said he'd like to be buried in the same plot as my mother. Oh, <laughs> so uh, that was his wish, and that's where he's buried. So, uh, but the platform, I used to work in an industry where we used to use 200 and 300 tonne cranes and to lift heavy items onto, onto sites that were sometimes very awkward. And if you draw that sort of thing, the, those cranes, they put out big legs a long way to keep the stability so yep. that when they reach and ride out, the crane doesn't tip over. And, and for me, that's sort of what vision does for me. It's, it's a couple of those big arms that reach out and I can draw from the teachings that I hear and I can draw from the beautiful music that I listen to that just ministers to my soul and keeps me filled up so that when I go out and I reach out to, to drug addicts and alcoholics and blokes that have been in prison and people that are hurting, my reservoir is filled up like the grain, uh, the tower that we're talking about getting filled for yeah. the silos on today. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
my tank is filled so that I can I can keep going. Oh, well, so. I, Peter, I've got so many questions. Uh, I've got so so many things I want to ask you here. But let's 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 take a moment. Uh, we're going to give people a chance to give us a call and fill up that silo to give people the stability. One through one eight hundred three sixteen. 316. Open up the Vision Christian Media app. You know what to do. Go to vision.org.au. It's Fel and DJ here. We're going to be back with Peter. I've, I've got, I've Fel, I know you've got some questions. I've got some questions as well. Peter, thank you for sticking around. We'll be with you in just a second. This is for King and Country. Peter, you have literally blown me away with this incredible story. To bring everybody up to speed, and tell me if I get any of the facts wrong, your dad is an elder in a church. Uh, you've you know, you've know, grown up there with your dad as an elder of the church in, in your family, and you were just a young fellow. You were early teens, was it? Before How? I turned 13, Dave Bef- took mum's life. Okay, so you're, so you're 12 years old. Mum, dad takes your mother's life. He, 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 the family's broken up. You know, that, that is cause for so much pain. Years later, God is doing a work in your life and you are able to go and forgive your dad, spend time with your dad. Mm. Fast forward to the end, your dad has passed away and he's buried. His last wish was to be buried with your mother. What an incredible story. I know there are people listening around Australia right now and all of us are saying, well, you had every right not to forgive. If anybody should not forgive, it should be Peter. I mean, what he's been through. Where does that forgiveness, where do you get the strength and the power from to go in there and face your dad and forgive him? That was Lord. That was all it could be. I was very, very blessed to be able to do a successful uh, stress management program in the first couple of years of going to church uh, when I got reinstated into a church. And um, it was a beautiful program. It, it, It really centered heavily on loving people and forgiving people and um, and I'll just like to make a little quote from a, a part, one of the book, a pages and it's by Dr. Sam Peoples Jr. and he said the circumstances in life, the events of life, the people around me in life do not make me the way I am but reveal the way I am Ooh. and I, I endeavoured to take on board a lot of the material which was all biblical mm. that I, from that program and and run with that because I knew I needed to be healed. And and I could only do that as I stepped in and took action and um, went forward. Just recently, even since I, I was uh, brought in on the radio a few weeks back, the Lord really blessed me from having stepped out. He took me into my Bible program at home to an Every Day with Jesus uh, Bible study, the 23rd of March it was, and it said about secular counselling brings out that we uncover the t- uh, trauma we've been through, we express that trauma, and then we put boundaries in pr- place, and that's secular counselling. I did that when I first went into prison and saw my dad, and I said, listen, Dad, I forgive you. I will never trust you. Never show your face at my door. Mm. They were, Those steps were accomplished there. Mm. But the Lord worked biblical counselling in my life later by the, the other two steps, and that is to come to the revelation that God... In your trauma, he's allowed it, but he is so much bigger and he is the true and loving God. And then the second step is to be able to walk back into the circumstances, if it's safe. I say that if it's safe. Mm. Walk back into those circumstances and love those people well Mm. and, and not fear being hurt further. Wow. Okay. And that... That's where I've come from. I've just had to live in that place. Peter. He just hit, the Lord crystallized for me by taking that action of stepping into into uh, being on air here. He it was like a reward for me of of crystallizing what he's already done to give me the understanding of it through a Bible study and I just thought you're just so good Lord. Mm. Peter that's just like God's love and action isn't it which is what we're all about here but I love your analogy that you came in with you said God gave it to you of you being steadfast you're sowing your, your feet are, are firm down in the ground and therefore you can actually go and be the hands and feet of God now and you're going back into prisons and you're able to go out and be that love in action because you're so strong in the Lord. Mm. Peter thank you for encouraging us this morning. Yeah. It's lovely to be with you. Yeah, you're absolutely. And I know what you've said this morning is what vision is all about, getting God's word out there to all of Australia. I know that what God is doing in you 
you already mentioned, you know, he's faithful to to fulfil it yeah. and to and and to and to make it, uh, you know, more of himself. So many people listening on uh, have been encouraged. So uh, thank you, Peter, for doing that. And I'm and I'm looking forward to not to give any spoilers away here, but you're going to be about to be interviewed by some real interviewers, not just Aww. these jokers on the breakfast show. And we're going to get to hear your story in full a little bit further on Vision, yeah. a little bit down the track. Hey, bl- listen, bless bless you so much, Peter. Uh, let's cut to the chase. If you want to give, if you've been touched by what Peter. Peter's talking about, please give us a call 1-800-316-316, 1-800-316-316. You need to click the Vision Christian Media app, open it up and hit donate or why don't you go to vision.org.au. 